Oh no! I'm getting chased by geese! Ah! I'm just joking. They're very imprinted on me already. Two weeks old and they're growing like champions. Getting to be beautiful birds. Rambunctious and all. I come out here do chores, just let them out the gate and they follow me along. They're happy now I let them out. They love the fresh grass. It's pretty impressive how quick they'll grow in two weeks. They ain't even two weeks old yet. I think Tuesday, which as of today is Sunday. So not quite two weeks old yet, but still getting very big pretty quick. Go on, babies. All it takes me to start walking around and they'll come running to me. Oh, one's back here still distracted by grass. Oh, here he comes. Ah! But as amazing as these birds are, they're not the highlight of this week. The highlight of this week is these beautiful birds. Very noisy. And they need a bigger box already. We got them in about Thursday, so they're about, about a week old now. A little less. And if anybody knows by their upright position that they like to stand, we'll tell you exactly what kind of bird they are, except for him. He sticks out a little bit. He's somebody else. But anyways, we have 12 fawn and white runner dots. Should be about half and half males and females, but we don't know. And then there's this little fella. He's another goose. He's gonna be their guardian. His name's Gary. He came with a girlfriend, but she did not make it into shipping, unfortunately. I contacted the hatchery and said, hey, this is what happened. We got our shipment in, post office called, said one didn't make it. So they said, well, well do you want a refund or do you want a replacement and a random duckling? We'll have to give you another bird because we cannot send one bird by itself. And me being sensible, I decided I'll go with a replacement and a random duck. So that's what's coming up in the week ahead. Very kind of them to do that for me, but... These guys are humongous mess makers. They're beautiful and they love to dip their whole head into the water for some reason. And they taught Gary how to do that because sometimes I come in and he looks like a complete crackhead. Yeah, you. Quit yelling at me. But they're hilarious when you let them out by themselves, let them run across the floor. They just pitter patter along. So the biggest project of the week is another chicken tractor. I'm going to have three of them built total, I think. One for the chickens, one for the ducks, and one for the geese. But that's long term, short time. Probably the first one I built, the bigger one. That'll be for the ducks and geese, and then chickens will be in this one specifically. I built it a little bit smaller. This one is a 10 by 6. It's a little bit shorter too. It's hard to tell from the camera, but I barely fit within it at the middle. But I'm alright with that. The reason being is... The first one I built, it was a 12 by 8, which granted I had a lot of room for. Here it's a 12 by 8. I have plenty of room, man. Problem is, it's kind of a pain to move around. And considering the next one's just going to have the chickens, it doesn't need to be built as big. I also want to make it a little bit lighter so that when I'm away for work, as my job requires me to be away from home for a couple of days to a week or maybe even two weeks at a time, I can't have Grace lifting up a 200-pound chicken house and trying to move it around. <laughs> I ain't going to be that difficult for her. So, the next one's going to be a little bit smaller. and I'm also going to fix a few design flaws that this one's had namely the support crosses they were all nailed in and i'm definitely going to have to switch over to doing screw and because every time i go to move it around one of them falls out so i'm already missing one but that will get fixed i mean it is convenient because i can hang stuff on it and the chickens will like to roost on it but it is a little tall in this one for them at three foot but it'll work out since i'm gonna have the uh nesting boxes about halfway up in the back on the new one and that should be plenty of for them the garden's doing fairly well. Of course, the biggest thing I changed was the drip line irrigation. Mainly because of convenience, but too because of the tomatoes. I noticed they've been getting their leaves curling up on the tip, which that is mainly due to watering overhead, and it basically burns the leaves after it dries off. Of two days doing drip irrigation, the leaves are finally starting to spread back out, and they're finally starting to heal themselves, and we got visitors. But I've noticed in the past week, I don't know how well it's going to show up on camera, but butterflies, little white fellas, they're all over my garden like crazy. They won't be around the other parts of the yard, just the garden. That's a good sign that we're, uh, we're bringing life, bringing life to an otherwise dead yard. I mean, how can you say it's dead when it's all grass, but grass doesn't attract anything. If we ever look over here to my spinach that I like to go to bolt, they all got flowers on them. Flowers attract pollinators like butterflies, of course. But another thing is, the potatoes are starting to get their flowers on them. And they're following me around. 
but they're already starting to get their flowers on them so here in about a couple weeks or so I could probably dig a few up and get some smaller sized potatoes but I'm not sure how well they'll do because I already was kind of digging around them a little bit and this soil was hard as can be I definitely misjudged how much clay was in this soil and it's bad and anybody that's tried to grow potatoes before know that they do not like clay hard soil but that's fine I mean even if I get just small couple inch inches or just even an inch around they're kind of nice to fry up in the pot they'll be a little on the stronger side tasting but if I don't like them I can still save them as seed potatoes next year or try to even go for a second harvest this year for some of them I think it's possible but definitely the biggest thing is going with the drip line irrigation I don't know how well it's going to show up on camera but up here was last watered last night and it's still fairly dark I mean it's starting to dry up on the surface but you stick your finger in the soil it's moist if I would have sprayed this this morning it would have been completely dry but yet it's held off since last night one of the major development for next year would be to have a permanent drip line irrigation setup for the whole garden but it is kind of pricey or at least the ones i got i got i think they're called super soakers or something like that from tractor supply i'm sure there's 20 other brands that make something similar for the same price but they're a 50 foot line was about 25 30 dollars so for me to do one line for each bed that's going to be a good bit not something i'm willing to do just at this moment but maybe save up for next year definitely but that's been all out here at the roaming ducks farm i'm sure the geese would love to say goodbye Oh, look at it. They're staying in the shade as much as they can. I don't blame them. But we'll see you guys another time. Please subscribe. Give a like. Help us out a little bit.